You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. LSU loses to Alabama on Saturday, and much of the angst in the postgame when T-Bob and I were doing whiskey and wine was, was about Max Johnson. And if you've, you've listened to me for any length of time, I'm not the guy that's ever just going to crush a college player. Not. Yeah, they're still amateur athletes. They're not getting paid to be out there. And I do think... He's out there trying his best to be his best. And sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. I also think that you're looking at a guy who is a true sophomore in his first season as a starter, and it's just not always going to look great. And that's okay. He's got room to improve and time to improve. But that doesn't mean you, you stand pat just because... And, I mean, there were obviously plays and opportunities on Saturday that were missed that Johnson could have made. There's no other way to say it. Uh, look, Ed Ogeron was asked about This is uh, 15. He was asked about the, the fourth down play in the second to last possession where Jack Besh was open, and, you know, Max Johnson sailed it. You know, Max has done very well taking some hits, and he, he's completed some balls, and he's, he's hung in there like a man. Sometimes he does hold the ball too long. Jack was open, the ball was high. True. And he had pressure on him, but Jack was open. If the ball was a little bit lower, Jack would have called it. I thought it was a good call. The ball was too high. I mean, it was. We all watched it. It was a bad throw. Um, the, the throw to Trey Palmer in the end zone was high on the fourth and seven, or fourth and goal from the seven. And the odd thing is, you know, for everyone who says he holds the ball too long, which there was evidence of that, the throw to Jack Besh, he was throwing it falling back. If he had just stepped into the throw, he probably completes it. But anyway, I'll maintain you don't win or lose a game because of one player, one moment in the game ever. And I think so much of so much of the issue right now is that people came into this season expecting Max Johnson to be great. And, I mean, when you do this job, everything you say is recorded on every platform, and you say the same things over and over again because you do it on, I do it on this show or interviews or whatever. My feeling all summer was that Miles Brennan was going to start game one against UCLA. Now, how he played determined, both guys are going to play, and how he played determined who's going to get the job. A lot of LSU fans just assumed it was going to be Max, and I'll tell you this, the coaching staff wanted Max Johnson to win the job in spring, and he didn't. And you're starting to see evidence of why. And now you've got a lot invested in Max Johnson because he started all year. He started two games last year, and he started nine so far this year. So he started 11 games, almost a full season as a starter, but he's still just a true sophomore quarterback with room to grow. I know I've pointed this out, but the most recent time that LSU started a true sophomore quarterback was Brandon Harris in 2015. As a true sophomore, Brandon Harris threw for 2165. That's two, you don't have to remember this, but 2,165 yards. He had 13 touchdowns and six interceptions. 2165. 13 and 6. And that 2015 season was interesting because that was Fournette, the great year that Leonard had. But LSU was not very good throwing the football that year with Brandon Harris. They started true sophomore the year before with Anthony Jennings. Jennings threw for just 1,600 yards, 1611. He had 11 touchdowns and seven interceptions. So by comparison, and by the way, before that, the most recent true sophomore start was Jordan Jefferson back in 2009. He threw for 2166, 17 touchdowns. Kind of incredible. Like and um and seven interceptions. Like almost incredible when you look at Jefferson's sophomore stats and Harris's sophomore stats, almost identical. 
Harris threw for 2165, 13 and 6. Jefferson 2166, one yard separated them. 17 touchdowns, seven interceptions. I mean, their their seasons are almost identical. And it's kind of what you're seeing from Max, who's thrown for more yards. Different style offense, obviously, but thrown for more yards, thrown for for more touchdowns, you know, right at the same number of picks. So there's room for growth. But the point being that historically, when you start a true sophomore quarterback, you just don't have great results. It doesn't always work out. You need to let these guys get experience and grow. But that also doesn't mean that you just give them unlimited rope and you don't give someone else a chance if they're not playing well enough, as it should be at any position. And the curious case right now with Garrett Nussmeyer is that he's played in three games. He can only play in one more. He can only play in one more to preserve his red shirt. Remember, you can play in four games and preserve your red shirt. So Nussmeyer so far played against McNeese, Central Michigan, and then against Ole Miss. And we haven't seen anything in those games that should wow you to the point where it necessitates playing him. But you also haven't seen anything yet from Nussmeyer that says, no way, no how should he be on the field. He was 3 of 10 against McNeese. It wasn't very good, but nothing was really good that day. Against Central Michigan, he only attempted four passes. He was 1 of 4. Um, and then against Ole Miss, he actually brought some life in, into the second half to so a most, mostly lifeless offense. He led a couple of scoring drives. They put 10 points on the board. You know, touchdown and a field goal drive. He was 7 of 12 for 103 and a score. You know, his rating was 157.9, so he pr- played pretty well in, in a game that was sort of out of hand at that situation. So Ed Ogeron is sitting here weighing this, and ultimately... Uh, what he said is that, uh, can you play 10, please, that it's going to be a, uh, a situation this week where the two quarterbacks are both going to get starters reps. I'll be 50-50 in practice. We'll let them split it. And uh, we haven't decided, Jake and I talked about it this morning, we haven't decided exactly how we're going to do it in the game. It may be first quarter, second quarter, maybe a couple series. This series, it all depends how practice goes, depends how the game plan is. Uh, if Max uh, plays better than Garrett, he's going to be the starter. If Garrett plays better than Max, he's going to be the starter. We'll let him battle out. And that's one of the things where I think we take Ed Ogeron at his word because he's done that. He did it with Joe Burrow when he came in. He did it last year after Miles Brennan was injured and had a legit battle, and TJ Finley won it. So I believe it. Let him go throughout the week and see who plays better, and they'll get, get the starter's opportunity. But I also believe there's a reason why Max Johnson has continued to be the starter based on what they've seen in practice. Now, Practice is practice, and a game is certainly different, and maybe that's why they're at this point. But the question I alluded to is Garrett's played in three games. He's got one more. So what about burning the red shirt? Ed Ogeron talked to both Garrett, Nussmeyer, and his father, Doug Nussmeyer, about that situation. Here's how the convo went. He was mad he didn't play. And uh, I talked to his father, uh, Doug, a lot, respect a lot. And we had talked on Thursday. They had to be snaps where there was significant and that if we put him in, he's going to play the rest of the year. And uh, I didn't feel that it was time to throw him in there for a couple of plays and then us burn his red shirt year. I didn't want to do that to him. And uh, he came in the office yesterday and was adamant about playing. Uh, his father called uh, Jake and said, listen, hey, here's the plan. He wants to play. Let him play. So that's what we're doing. So obviously – it looks like right now he may not redshirt. It all depends on how the game goes, but that's his choice, and that's what he wants to do. I, and I believe that should be his choice. Some players may have no ambition of ever staying in college football for five years. And if that's the case, then play him. Play him for a play. Play him for whatever they want. If, if there's an opportunity to help the team, don't throw him out there just because, but if there's an opportunity to help the team, you do it. If the player is saying, I'm not staying five years in college football. Now, the, the other part of that is college football, as we've seen, is a very transient game right now with the transfer portal and you never know what could happen I mean the odds are that the the three quarterbacks currently at LSU I guess two right now they're not going to finish at LSU because quarterbacks transfer so more than likely you're not going to see these two guys finish their career at LSU would he need that year at another place maybe but Doug Nussmeyer is a college coach. He's smart. He can advise his son. They can make that decision. If he wants to play and he's the better of the two guys, you run him out there and you play him. And then see if he could make an impact this weekend against Arkansas. Because your your goals have been reshaped now. And your goal is to get to a bowl game. Find a way to win two of your next three and get to a bowl game. Your best chance is this weekend against Arkansas. Nussmeyer helps you, makes you a more dynamic offense. You roll with it. You know, the other thing, too, is you're not actually 
auditioning because there's a new coach who's going to come in and none of us know who it is and you don't really know what that coach is going to want to run stylistically. It really is a decision of do you want to play football this year on this team to help this team get to a bowl? Nussmeyer says yes. He's a better guy. Play him. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.